So here we are on the beach. My first day on my uh, new adventure back on the road. And I thought I would begin it um, by watching the sunrise and taking a walk on the beach. Um, I spent uh, the last week just packing up my things and trying to um, get a little blue two ready. And it seemed like it was taking forever. I had a lot of crap to go through. Uh, mostly uh, family photos, old letters, and um, a lot of legal paperwork. And that was like taking forever. So uh, my ex-girlfriend was kind enough to let me stay as long as it took to get it straightened out. But um, I pretty much decided that um, I needed to leave. You know, I was probably prolonging the inevitable. So I uh, made a decision uh, yesterday that, you know, that it would be my last day there and what didn't get done didn't get done. So I loaded up a big huge bin of, of trash, packed up my um, vehicle as best as I could. Um, I may still have to stop by there one last time just for a final check, but I think I got most of what I need. And um, here I am on the road. So this is the first vlog. I hope the uh, the sound comes out. I tried the cotton tip there to, to block the mic, but um, this is my first time doing this here uh, live on the beach, and I know that we might get some wind noise, so I apologize in advance if there are any. Um, but we're at the, uh, I think it's called the Indian Atlantic Beach. It's the beach at the end of um, 192 in Melbourne Beach, and this morning sunrise is just spectacular. Um, I'm actually um, used to be on this beach quite a bit because I do um, beach photography and if you go to my website um, www.theborephotography.com um, you'll see a lot of what looks like sunset pictures but they're actually sunrise pictures and um, they were shot on beaches mostly throughout Florida along the east coast and I had a couple here from um, Melbourne Beach. But let me go ahead and give you a, a, a look at the beach so you can see how nice this beach is. There's our sun. And the rest of the beach. So, I hope that I get the composition right in this, uh, with this little selfie stick. It's a $5 unit I bought from Five Below. I'll, I'll probably show it later. It's, uh, if it works well, this is a great deal for 5 bucks. It doesn't work so well. I um, tested initially and it seemed like it was working great. But um, basically, I'm going to be spending today just trying to figure out my strategy and my plan for uh, surviving out here because this latest round of living in a van is um, not something I had truly planned on, although in the back of my mind I had prepared a little blue just in case and um, my um, girlfriend and I ended up breaking up because of issues that stemmed from my ex-wife. So. Um, I'm back in the van again. I don't plan on being in the van forever, and um, even though this, I guess this round of me living in the van isn't something that I um, did on purpose or wanted to do, I'm very, very grateful that I had the van pretty much ready to go. And um, I'm currently working out a game plan for basically doing uh, one of two things. Well, actually both things. Um, eventually, I'd like to get back on the grid in a home, maybe a tiny home or even a hobbit home or just something, a uh, cabin in the woods. Um, but for now, because I am in the van, I basically have a choice. I can um, look at it as a depressing situation. Um, I, I've had to do this before in the past. and did it about three years or so ago. and. Um, that instance was by choice. I did that when I had a job in South Florida as a U.S. mail carrier, and um, basically I couldn't afford to live in uh, 
South Florida, um, specifically the Jupiter area. And I ended up um, making a decision to live in my van and to work down there. So I could keep making um, child support and whatnot. And I did that until um, the police pretty much uh, caught me. And um, they don't really do much other than just tell you to move. But unfortunately for me, I had to work there. So, you know, I told them I was their mail carrier. And if they took me in, they wouldn't get their mail. But um, they gave me a warning first time and told me I needed to stop. Then they caught me again and said, hey, you know, you can't keep doing this. And finally, the third time they did it, they said, um, you know, if we um, catch you again, we're going to impound your car and take you in. So at, at that point, I was like, well, I ended up going back on grid and, um, you know, rented a room and became broke, um, you know, because I, all my money went into paying for a room. So this go round though, I um, lost my job recently with the post office due to some accidents. Um, police didn't find me at fault, but if you're with the USPS, anytime you're in an accident, uh, they say the driver's at fault. Now the police came and, um, you know, actually I wasn't in one, I was in three accidents. It seems like I have a target that says hit me or something. But um, people kept running into me. And, you know, the police would show up, they'd look at the accident, and they wouldn't, you know, say that I was at fault because I wasn't at fault. I wasn't really doing anything wrong. I, you know, I did everything I was supposed to. But for whatever reason, people feel that if there's a mail truck, they just don't see it or something. And they cut right through and you're backing up, um, you know, in your blind spot. Or you're getting ready to park and they cut into the parking spot that you're pulling into. But that's pretty much what happened to me. The post office let me go. Um, I got screwed. They, they wouldn't give me um, um, unemployment. So that left me uh, with no income at all. So I, I began a job search. And shortly after I was looking for um, work, um, my original van, Little Blue, I don't know, for those of you who have been following me from the beginning, um, ended up getting rear-ended. Um, basically, I was at a, a stoplight, and this older gentleman um, slammed into me at full speed, pushing my vehicle into the vehicle in front of me. Um, that really messed me up badly. Um, my back and neck was all messed up, and I could barely walk. But um, the physical therapy and the treatment has helped me. I'm um, still in constant pain, but I'm planning on recovering by... Um, basically getting myself into shape and, and um, strong again by working out and, and continuing with my PT. Um, part of living in the van here is that I will be doing a lot of physical things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with the pain right now as best as I can. I try not to take any um, pain meds unless I have to. And um, the, the plan is just to work my muscles, uh, get my um, strength back, and become myself again. Um, I'm not like super athletic or anything, but I am into physical activities, um, you know, hiking, uh, walking on the beach, running, jogging, and um, boating, kayaking, th things that are outdoor in nature. And uh, since this injury, I've been kind of um, confined to mostly sitting around and, and not doing too much physical activity just because I hurt. Even walking on this beach, I'm hurting right now, but um, I'm hoping that over time, my um, back and my core, my strength will come back and I'll be okay. Now, this particular go around with living in the van, I'm actually probably at the worst situation I've been in, which is um, unemployed. So I have no income coming in right now. Well, I will say I do have a little bit of income coming in and that is, um, believe it or not, from this YouTube channel. Um, I had uh, put the channel up, not so much to make money, but to help people who found themselves in this exact situation that I'm in, which is, you know, you find out you're about to become homeless and um, you only have access to your car or your van and you have very limited time and very limited funds to prepare and get yourself ready because if, if you don't do that, your other option is to be on the street. and. Um, I think being in a van is, is a lot better than being on the street. 
so I took the time to prepare my vehicle, even even when I was with my girlfriend. Um, not so much because I was going to have to live in it, but because I was planning on taking some trips with her. But that didn't happen. And Little Blue 2 became converted from a part-time pleasure vehicle to a vehicle that I can uh, live in full-time right now. And um, I'm, I'm very thankful to God that I had that opportunity to get it ready. Um, and that my um, former girlfriend here didn't just boot me out suddenly, um, you know. We talked about it. Um, she still loves me, and I still love her, but we're not headed in the same direction. And also, the situation with my ex uh, and, you know, being here in this area in Brevard County, which is where everything occurred initially with my uh, really, really ugly, messy horse. Um, I think it's too much for anyone in this area to handle, and for me, um, I'm I'm just tired of it. It's it's been um, six years. We're about to go on seven years now since my divorce, but um, I'm still having to deal with uh, issues that stem from that. So at, at this point, you know, I've decided that um, since my girlfriend and I broke up, I would go ahead and move into the van and just um, leave. I still want to see my children and will try to see them as much as I can, but I can't just sit here and waste another year of my life away. I'm, I'm not getting any younger and um, I've already spent six years going to court over and over and fighting to a system that doesn't listen, uh, that doesn't seem to really care about the children, but does care about the child support and money coming in to um, pay for all their services and the legal fees. So at this point, I leave with no income other than YouTube. And right now, um, with my viewership, which is probably, um, I've got about 800 subscribers or so, which isn't that much. Um, and so I'm not making really enough to live off, but hopefully I'm making enough to at least pay my insurance each month and maybe end up with 25 bucks in gas or something so I can at least run around town. Um, I'm hoping to. Um, do some other YouTube channels now that I know how to monetize and how to make money um, using YouTube, which by the way makes a lot more money than my um, website and blog do combined. So um, YouTube is a pretty good investment if you can learn how to upload and, and keep your content um, fresh and make it so that people want to watch. Um, I basically will be working on some other YouTube channels. Um, the Living in a Van channel, like I said, wasn't designed to make money. It was designed to help other people and I took advantage of the opportunity to learn about monetizing and um, basically how all this works. And now that I know, I'll probably uh, put together a more general interest or a, a, um, a page, a YouTube channel that has um, more widespread appeal to try to get the viewership up enough to the point where I'm making at least a, a decent income. I, I suspect that you need at least, probably at least 30 to 40,000 viewers to make anywhere near enough to live off. Um, right now, like I said, I've only got 800. Um, I do appreciate if you'd share, like and share this um, video with others to try to get my channel up to help me because it is my pretty much my sole source of income right now and it is like nothing. I've only got 800 and I need about um, 40 to 50,000 or so to, to be okay. But like I said, I'm, I'm not just sitting on it. I, I am um, working on um, some ideas for some other channels, just trying to figure out what I can do uh, while being in a van <laughs> because that does certainly limit my options for the type of channels I can do. But I need to make one that um, people are going to like and watch and tune in every every time I upload a video and share so that it can spread and grow. And um, that'll probably be my biggest thing. The The other thing that I will do is um, I am a, a writer. I, I used to be a um, professional writer with the United States Air Force uh, working as a base newspaper editor. Haven't really uh, used my writing to make money since I left the military. But um, now I'm, I'm going to do my blog and also maybe write some books. I, um, I used to be a, a first grade teacher before you know my life fell apart with the ugly divorce and everything else, which I'll, I'll bring up later um, on another blog. But um, 
when that life went away, my life just went into chaos uh, for the past six almost seven, six almost seven years. So um, I'm, I thought that by now I would have been um, reset and could go on with my life, but that hasn't been the case. And it hasn't been the case because every time I start to settle down and, and seem like I'm happy and stuff, things get stirred up and I keep responding to it and then I find myself back in the situation. So this go around, I'm planning on just um, ignoring all that and just moving forward because time's running out. You know, I'm, I'm not getting any younger. I'm um, getting older and older and I've been dealing with this for seven years now, six years, seven years and it doesn't seem to be going away. Um, so, I'm living in a van. Now, um, for today, this, as this is my first day, I'm getting readjusted to the van life, learning um, a routine. And I'm liking this routine of um, watching the sunrise again. I used to do that when I was in Jupiter. Matter of fact, I, I did something kind of bad. <laughs> I uh, parked my vehicle and slept overnight several times on the um, inlet itself, on Jupiter Inlet, and that's how the police caught me. You know, it's, a, it's a very expensive area, and when they see a vehicle that looks like it's spending the night on the beach, they tend to call the police and they come to check you out. It's pretty bad when the police know you by name and knock on your door and say, hey, oh, you know. I mean, they knew me. They were on the lookout for me. So um, this go round, I even though I'm, I'm I'm currently stuck here in the Melbourne area, I'm stuck in the Melbourne Palm Bay area, basically Brevard County, Florida, um, because I'm waiting for funds, and also I have um, some more, or at least one more court appearance uh, related to the um, divorce and whatnot. Ex, uh, my ex-wife keeps causing all this stuff and basically calling me back into court and that's one of the reasons I'm leaving I'm just tired of it um, so the plan will be to establish a process for getting back you know either uh, the, the first thing is to get on the road because I do want to take advantage of this opportunity to do what I've always wanted to do which was to travel now my goal is to travel in the van around the country maybe for a year or two and then after that settle down in a nice little house somewhere um, I, I want to be able to build my own house to become self-sufficient I don't want to um, be in the rat race anymore I, um, I'm too old for that and also I just I just want peace I just want to be happy and being happy to me is living a simple life um, ideally I, I can find a a woman who shares the same views and but you know I, I don't know how many women would actually like uh, hanging out with a guy that lives in a van but um, there's always hope right the the other thing is um, just basically surviving day by day so this vlog will initially start off with me just um, probably figuring out my routines I'm showing you what I do every morning um, this particular morning you can hear I got Sweat in my eye here. It's starting to get hot. But um, basically, I'll probably start off each. Um, well, the vlogs, the initial vlogs, will probably be more on the survival side, just learning um, my new environment, learning how to uh, stealth camp in this in Brevard County. Um, I've got some spots, and I'll share. But I may not share them right away while I'm there. But when I'm no longer there. Uh, I'll post links and stuff so those of you who happen to be passing through or are in Brevard and find yourselves in this situation will know some safe spots where it's fairly safe to park. Um, for the most part, I plan on not being in the city itself this go around. As soon as I get some funds, I'm actually planning on traveling, um, hitting maybe BLM lands and uh, or doing some stealth in various cities. but. I don't intend to just sit here and mope and be sad about my situation. I intend to just be on the road and doing new things and um, experiencing life. I, I'm tired of being on hold. So I'll be bringing you along on my journey and I hope that you stay with me. Thank you.